Okay, welcome to the conference call. We're going to go ahead and get started here with um, how to use the CMA tool that we have available for all of you on the call. Um, there is some tools that we have on our resource guide and we're going to cover how to package everything together uh, for a CMA. Maybe you're doing a CMA tonight and you need to get something off to your client or prepare for a listing appointment. This is the type of call that we have to just learn the mechanics of how to put that all together in the easiest way um, that I know how to do that. We've also updated the listing presentation. So some of you who are used to working with like a 25 page listing presentation, we've slimmed it down to approximately I think 12 to 15 pages, which will make it easier for you to get through with your client and be able to bundle it all together with your CMA. So, Tonight is going to cover all of that, and I've got a sample up on the screen before I go there. Uh, let me go ahead and go to bestchoicerealtyhomes.com, as you can see from this cute little dog picture on the resource guide, and let you know where you can find these materials that we're talking about tonight. If you go to bestchoicerealtyhomes.com, there is the seller presentation right here where you can click on and seller presentation, it takes a moment here because I'm show, sharing my screen. You have a the listing presentation, the reference sheet. These are additional pages that some of you guys like to use. This is the actual presentation, and these are all like add-ons, things that you may use on an appointment. Some of you are like, I wanna know what Best Choice Realty has sold. These have been, um, addresses that you could use if you wanted to show your seller in a potential area what we've sold in King County or what we've sold in Pierce or in Snohomish. Um, so that, that gives you a nice sheet for that. If you want to customize your presentation, maybe you're going on a high-end listing appointment tomorrow or probably give yourself a couple days to get this ordered, but say I wanted to customize my listing presentation so it had my name, my picture, my bio incorporated into that, there is a link right here. You click get a custom listing presentation. And if you fill this out, it's $25 for our graphic designer to build this for you. She's basically taking the three pages and making them your pages. So add custom page information, say I'm going on an appointment tomorrow. Um, July, I'll put the date of the presentation, that way she'll know what date you need to have it done by, the address of the property, the client's name, uh, let's see, Shannon, the con your contact email, so what I want to show up, my contact phone number, my address, Luckily, I've got my address queued up. My website. So if I had my own website like Cheryl has, CherylMcLaren.com. Okay. My bio. I usually would have to copy and paste. If I have a Zillow bio, let's see, I'll probably just go get Cheryl's here. So like say I have a website already created and I just need to have my bio put on. Um, Take a minute. There he is. There's her bio. So say I want to copy this and I want this on my presentation. I just copy that. Zoomtopia, hang on. Sorry about that. I gotta click out of my, my other things here so I can focus on what I have. Custom, there it is, my bio, I just post that in there. My testimonials, if I have three different testimonials, I pop those in there. And then I need to choose a photo of myself. So I go to pictures, pick my photo, upload my photo, add it to my cart. What this will then do is send Lori, our graphic designer, um, you got to pay for it, obviously, the $25, but she'll go ahead and customize those three pages for you and put it into a nice bundle so that we have it available for when you do those listing boxes or you decide you want to have our office print your presentation. We can do that and have that available for you as long as you've already had it customized. So that's what the $25 would get you is the 
listing presentation customized with your information, your bio, your picture, your information, um, so that you can be incorporated into your box. So that's what that is. Let me go back to the other um, section so you can see the revised pages. What you'll notice right off the bat for some of those, of, for those of you who have been with Best Choice for a while, I asked Lori, our graphic designer, to go ahead and change the listing presentation so it's on the vertical rather than being on the horizontal because I think a lot of you would use it more if it was easy for you to print. She also designed it in such a way where you could print it from your home office um, or on your, on your own personal laser printer or at Costco or wherever you may be or your FedEx or your Kinko's and actually bind it yourself. So it's made to be where you don't have to, there's not a bleed, if you know what, what bleed is, it doesn't bleed off the page so that any printer can print this off and it will look very, very nice. So this is the revised listing presentation. Notice it's very simple and clean lines. Our mission statement's there. This page, which was like on four pages, she condensed. So it's on a nice one page. Some of you may wanna use that just as a talking point um, for your listing presentations. This is the page which tells we're the fastest growing independent brokerage in Washington. There's, there's the testimonials. If you get the generic presentation, we went ahead and used three of my testimonials as ways to promote our company. We got permission from all three of these, so you're welcome. If you don't have testimonials, you can use mine. It definitely was um, my best choice realty broker was caring and patient and motivated to sell our home. All of these um, clients, they were my clients, they've allowed us to use their testimonials in this way. Also this page, we're not paid for our time, but our market expertise, notice that a lot of the photos have been updated and selected to blend well with the presentation. We know how to market your property. And then the maximum exposure, it's, it's definitely slimmed down. It's only on one page. And then our profile that some of you guys really liked, we updated that as well with the updates for 2019. Notice Lori found some cute little picture with some even some teal photos or some teal pillows. So she did a good job of blending um, the colors well with the, the, the package. Max, uh, marketing strategies, maximizing the value of your property. This is the, when sellers ask how long it takes to sell, there's no easy answer, but basically it kind of goes down what they need to help you with, the decluttering, just depersonalization. This is a part in the presentation where you can go over what they need to be aware of. And then we took photography and, and staging put it on the same page so that you guys can talk openly about uh, photography and staging. She kept the open house strategy, one, two, three, of what we do. Some of you like to do open houses, others of you don't. Again, you could take the page out if you needed to um, in your customization presentation. Uh, signage strategy, she also updated that photo. She didn't like the picture we had before. It, this was a nice, clean, crisp photo. Uh, shows an example of our signage and the marketing strategies notice that we do have the, the map showing that we specialize in 15 plus languages with all the different variety of, of brokers that we have in our office um, and then the last page she did used to have if you remember there was a page that talked about your contact information all of that got moved to the front the first page which will then allow us to add the CMA at the back of this so this will beef up your presentation and give you, for, you know, in 15 pages, a good brief introduction of who you are, what the company is all about, what are some marketing strategies, and how do we work with staging, photography, and signage to basically get their home sold for the least amount of hassle and for the most amount of money. That's the best way I could describe what we just covered in 15 pages. So the next part you would want to do is basically load up your CMA. So say I was going on an appointment. I mean, I know I got to go out and do a CMA. Got to do that for my listing appointment. Many of you have used the MLS for those types of um, things, but I found that it's much more user friendly and easier on the eyes for your sellers to actually experience a cloud CMA. And we do allow at Best Choice Realty for you to access my cloud CMA account so that you can do your own CMAs. And most of you on the call have used this. If you're new to the business or new to Best Choice Realty, um, what you do need is my login and my password so that you can do your CMA on our cloud CMA. 
realize that you cannot change my login and password. Everybody has access to that login and password, but that allows me to go in and assist you if you have trouble with coming up with comparables or needing help with adjustments to your CMA so that you can go out the door with a very, very good presentation. So go to cloudcma.com. For those of you who are new to the organization, I'll go ahead and we can log in so you can see how this works. Actually, I'm gonna log out. Um, actually, let's see here. It just knows me, I guess. It likes that I'm... Um, <laughs> well, I guess all I'll do is we'll just go ahead and give you my login. My login is, if you go to cloudcma.com, my login is Rochelle, mind first name, R-A-C-H-E-L-L-E, -E, at bestchoicerealtywa.com. And then the password, my son has had this password, or we've had a Cloud CMA account since my son was eight years old. My son now is 13 years old. So I've had the same password for five years. So I don't want you guys changing my password. I am, that's the only caveat I have here with showing you how to use my tool is that you do not change my password and do not change my login. So you can add pages. I don't have a problem with that. You can create a CMA. You can do a lot with this tool. Please do not change my login and password. Um, you can get blacklisted from Cloud CMA by doing that. So when you're in this, this is what you'll see when you log in, your login and password. You can create a new report by clicking here, or you can go up to CMA and you can see all of the CMAs. These are all the recent reports that people have done. This was my recent CMA that I loaded. And let me just show you what that looks like. It's a PDF, so you can see how it all bundled together now that you've seen the first pages. It's a 50 page document. That's because I added like every, every comp you could imagine. Um, but you can see all the pages we talked about already. And then when you get to that last page that we said, look how nice that transitions. The colors blend very nicely map of comparable properties goes right on in and then it goes through all of the comparables and kind of explains all of the different subject versus the comparable here's the summary actives pendings and solds notice i put here you guys will love this i put i got rid of my photo because a lot of you complain i have to fix the little umbrella here it kind of cut out but you get the gist it does it will have my name on it because this is my account this is my cloud cma account but I did right underneath, instead of having my title, they did allow me to customize that. And I went ahead and put best choice realty broker approved. I think that gives you as the listing agent, just kind of some extra umph, if you will, uh, to let your sellers know that you're using a tool that your broker has approved. And um, you can let them know that, you know, your broker had an opportunity to review this. And this is the pricing that we came up with at best choice realty. So this will give you some extra um, oomph if you're going on a listing appointment. Okay, so that's that's what it is in a package format in PDF. Let's go ahead and build one tonight so you can see how easy it is to use this system. So you go create a new report. I have a buyer tour property report or flyer. It's just a CMA, so that's the easy one. Uh, the client, we're going to label it with their name if it was Roger and Sally. It will customize that for you, Roger and Sally North. Um, the property would be, I'm gonna just pick one here. Okay. It automatically pulls from the MLS. So it's gonna pull the automatic, whatever it's coming from Realist and Matrix, it's gonna pull that into the square footage or the bedrooms and the bath. So if you know it's 2.5 bath, you need to put that in. Um, if I had a photo, I could go ahead and add a cover photo right here. Otherwise, it's going to pull a map. Add a cover photo. So let's say I had a photo I wanted to use. I wish I had some pictures. I can just go ahead and throw that one so you can see what it looks like. And it'll ask you to crop it. Usually it would be a house, you guys, but you get the gist. Um, and then you have the two options here if you scroll down. You have the quick and dirty, which I do not recommend, um, or the exact listing numbers that you find from the MLS. I would much prefer you know the area, know the location, and utilize the MLS to find the exact listings that you want to incorporate 
um, rather than using the quick and dirty. Sometimes I've found that it doesn't catch it correctly. Sometimes there's too many, you have to sort it. It's not easy to sort and make that work on this program. This is more of a presentation tool, more than helping you find the comparables. It does allow for you to modify the comparables and add adjustments and subtractions and deletions, but I'm going to break my own rule here, but realize you should be putting the MLS numbers in when you're doing your actual CMA. For the interest of time, I'm just gonna check the box. And um, see, it even goes back a year. We don't wanna go back a year. Um, and I just want 10 listings is fine. I just, I just don't like the quick and dirty on this thing. Okay, so for the interest of time, the next thing, once you put the MLS numbers in, you'll see the next thing that comes up is a way for you to adjust the comparables. And it's still thinking. There it goes. It's comparing notes with the MLS. It puts it onto an, a map like this. And then you have a summary right here on the right. It said three actives and seven solds, which is not bad. It kind of puts together all the grays. Um, if I want to exclude, like say, oops, I typed in the wrong MLS number, like say it was a million dollars, like this one right here, 1 1.2. I'm like, ooh, I don't want this one to really, you know, be part of my report. I accidentally put the wrong MLS number in. All I would have to do is just uncheck it right here and it removes it. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck a few just so you can see how that works. What I'm working through, you guys, on the summary of prices is I'm trying to get the, the presentation tool to speak for me in the numbers that it shows here. So if my number is showing a high number here, that's going to be where my client's going to be drawn to. Doesn't matter how you do it, they're basically wanting a high, they're gonna go like, I think I can get my house sold for 650, which is not correct. So I'm going to wanna make sure that my comparables speak the language I'm trying to share, share with them. I want my low to be like a little bit below market value, my median or average to be at probably the, the market value and my high to be, um, it's gonna take a bit more market time. We may have to do some price reductions to get it to the price. That's the way I kind of set out to go and get this number to speak your language. Just work on the high being, I won't take the listing if they go higher than this. Um, so, because they're gonna be drawn to the high number, they always are. I've tried it many different ways and that's come what I've done with, with many years of doing this. Okay, so then I look at my, my listings and then I may want to do some adjustments. So if my, for example, my house is, um, does not have a three car garage, maybe mine only has a one or a two car garage, I'm going to need to make an adjustment. So I will go here and make an adjustment of $5,000. It would be a minus. And when I do that, notice that my numbers here on the summary of prices also adjust as well. Maybe my condition, they had updated the subject to update their bathrooms. So they paid about $15,000 for that remodel and they are gonna get that because these are old cabinets, old fixtures, old bathtub, old flooring, or you know, original to the house. I wouldn't say old, it would be original to the house. Be careful on what terminology you use. But the subject property in this particular example has updated bathrooms. So I'm gonna go ahead and give them the 15,000 for that, okay? That's a very subjective factor. So be careful you don't get too crazy with your factors. Make sure they're reasonable. But if you have a 2,500 square foot home versus the 1950, I do need to adjust for square footage. So I do need to adjust for square footage. So I take my square footage factor and in, in this particular area of Pierce County, um, it is $35 a square foot. So let's just say that my uh, subject property is 1,900 square feet. This one happens to be, well, it's 1956. I went to the wrong one. Let's do this one right here. This one happens to be 2,500 square feet. So we're gonna have to adjust for square feet. So I'm gonna take my 2,500 minus 1,950, and it's 550 square foot of a difference. Multiply that by $35, and that gets me a value of 19,250. Since I have less square footage, I have to minus. And just make sure you save as you go along, otherwise it doesn't adjust. So notice that it did change my, my averages. So I need to go back up um, and get figure out where the 650 is coming from. My guess is it's right from here. So either I need to adjust it and look at this, 
Oh yeah, this is definitely not comparable. This is way out of the ballpark. It's 2,900 square feet and it has some acreage associated with it. So it's not in the same ballpark. It's in a very, very big lot. So this would be one I would want to remove from the presentation altogether. After I've had second thoughts on it and looked at all of the other comparables, I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. So I still, still am on the high side with this 580. So there's something, oh, there's this one that's 580. That doesn't really speak my language, the low 279 as well. This must be either a townhome, Oh, mobile home. So yeah, definitely don't want to get rid of that one. And then let's go ahead and fix the 581 too. So let's see what this one is. This is a rambler, which is not, and it's also on a 2.2 acre pastoral property in Desirable Edgewood. It's down the street, so it's not in a neighborhood, but it definitely has acreage. Definitely would not be comparable because of the acreage, unless I was to back out the acreage, which I could do and probably come up with the same answer. I have enough comparable, so I'll go ahead and just remove that. And that puts my range on the low side of 410. I would probably need to kind of tidy this up a bit. You won't want your range from four, like that's like a $100,000 range. In this price point, you guys really should button that up. And your low should be more like a 450 to 490, would probably be the, the range that you want to go with the median average being around 479 or 465. That's pretty good. That really speaks the language and helps your seller come up with the price. Once I get that all buttoned up and I've adjusted the comparables accordingly, the next step is to customize the report. So I click on customize. It takes a minute because it's bundling all of the, the reports. Then I've got some choices. Unfortunately, you're going to have to deal with whoever was the last one to do a CMA. You're going to get their last kind of list of their materials in your queue here. So let's say that one of our teams used our cloud CMA account. They may not have the BCR listing presentation 2019 generic in the very first. So let's just remove that. They may have just bumped in a few pages, maybe the map. Maybe they had an introduction page, like a title page and they have that in there. So you can basically look on the, this is what you're going to package on the right side. On the left side is what you select. So you wanna make sure you are familiar with how you want it packaged. And I'm gonna give you my best, what I would go out the door and how I would package it. And again, if you need some added things, maybe you have a difficult client or you need to throw some additional pages in, you can do so very easily by uploading. I'll show you how to do that. So on this part, let's say this was the original uh, the title page, if you don't know what it is, you can, you can move it around. See, I can move the title page around just by holding it. But let's say I don't want it, I changed my mind, I want the actual best choice realty um, presentation at the very start. So I, I will go ahead and just remove that title page. And then the map will be the next thing that shows up. But I gotta go get that custom page that Rochelle was talking about tonight. It's under custom pages right here. And they have, there's some, you can see some of the other agents have put their own, like Amy Thompson has her own page. That's fine. You'd have to create it, but please do not change my password. Uh, the cover page, some of these are generic and some of those are um, added. The one that we were talking about earlier is this one. So if I want to add it to my presentation, I click the plus, goes on in, it puts it at the back. You have to move it up. It wasn't me. <laughs> Must be, must be an accident. So I just gotta move it up. Move it up to the very beginning of my presentation. Doesn't wanna move while I'm showing. I'll move it up slightly, there we go. Move it up there. So, come on, stay with me here. There we go. So then, so the first thing I'm gonna have is a BCR listing presentation. The map of all the listings is going to come up that I used. The summary is going to be next. I do like to see the adjustments. I do do adjustments. If you don't, you probably will need to remove it. Um, the photos are the first dozen. Maybe I don't need the photos. Maybe I don't. Most people like the photos though, you guys. So I like the details, the photos and the adjustments. Um, the comparable property statistics is a good one. The sold property analysis. Some of the other ones I like is the analysis. It's in the analysis. It's the online valuation analysis. Depending on my client, if they're very much like on Zillow and Redfin and they're very techie, I like to lead with that page. So I will actually bring the online valuation page on up. 
put it up here next to the map of all right before the summary before I do my own um, breakout. And there's a lot of other um, pages that you can use. Maybe you need moving checklists or features that sell, or you need to explain the commission distrib distribution if you're dealing with a very new seller who's never sold before. Uh, maybe you have a closing chapter. There's some other pieces that you could add to the presentation to kind of close it out. But that's basically how I would go is have my presentation, whether it be bound, maybe I didn't have it bound, maybe I'm printing it out to go out on my appointment tomorrow. Um, then I would go ahead and do that right here and then add my comparables and my analysis at the back of the presentation. From last week, I could go ahead and upload a <clears throat> I could upload a, a net sheet if I wanted to. A lot of times I just keep the net sheet at my, you know, so like when I'm presenting in person, I have them in my, my bag so I can break it out and I do it very, very strategically. But to bundle this, that will take some, some pages for sure, but I do need to click publish and then it will put it all into the publish, into a PDF for me. It takes a minute or two. I'm right up at the six o'clock. I was hoping I could get through it today, you guys. So hopefully this is helping you to understand how to use the tool. And then once it's published, well, it's publishing, it takes some time. You can email it directly from the program, but better yet, I would download it. I found people, it would go to their spam. So I would not recommend sending it from here if you want to view it. See, there's options where you can copy the PDF or email. Wouldn't recommend emailing the report. I've done that and it's got caught up in spam filters. I would copy the PDF, so you view it, copy it, and then attach it, just like you would if you were doing an offer if you're gonna email it, or just go ahead and view it and print it. Okay, so as you can see, it put my pages together. If I go to the very, very end of the presentation, you'll notice that it put together my CMA. Uh, it was after the comprehensive map of the comparable listing. So there's my subject. The purple house is my subject. The red are my solds. I would have had to manipulate my map and that was a step I missed in order for the map to show other things. But it looks like it put it in a nice, really um, narrow map, which is all of these are homes in the neighborhood, very, very close by. Then it puts in here the next page. Remember I told you I added that page, that online valuation analysis. This is a page where I speak to where I say, um, you know, what is Mr. or Mrs. Seller, you said that you check Zillow and Redfin regularly. What does Zillow say your home is, is worth? They begin to tell me, and I could say it's it's worth that the estimate on Zillow is off in this neighborhood by one percent. But that could mean some money for you, especially if the estimate's off by one percent. That means could, we could have more money in your pocket or less money in your pocket. But as you can see, it did it accurately. It's comparing if all of these homes today, the estimate, what the estimate said. And what the sold price was, obviously this one was different. The estimate said it was worth a couple thousand dollars more. On this one, the estimate said it was 10,000 more. On this one, only a few thousand. On this one, pretty spot on. So the accuracy of this estimate, it, it, this is very rare actually. Most of the time I'm seeing anywhere from minus 4% or 5%. But this, instead of you going to Zillow and having to <clears throat> having to check to see what the estimates are for all of the comparable properties, these the Cloud CMA does that for you. They have a widget that has allowed for that data to populate in this type of format. So it's pulling right from Zillow and it's estimating and putting that, if you were to estimate what your home would be, it would be off by 1%. So knowing that, then we can talk very educated, you know, I'm not a Zillow, I'm actually touring your home and actually estimating your home based on the comparable properties, much like an appraiser. I'm able to take uh, deductions or additions for square footage, for lot size, for view, for things that are comparable factors that impact your bottom line. And then I go through one by one. This is a house, it has the third car garage, I made the adjustment for the third car garage, what do you think about that? And I go through the comparables and you can see the nice little summary page that kind of gets them on the same page. I adjusted for the garage and for your updated bathroom. So really at the end of the day, this particular comparable, if everything was apples to apples in comparison, you should list your home at 479 versus 469 if all things were made alike.
okay? That's how you kind of can bundle it out. If you've got, now this page right here, it ended up being 37 pages. I could easily print that or have it available on my laptop or on my device. And I could scroll through and go through the presentation very seamlessly with my client. Before, I think some of you are struggling, you're overthinking it to have maybe a listing presentation on the horizontal. And maybe I put it on my iPad. And maybe I have my CMA on a separate sheet and I have it in a folder. This makes it very easy for you to just bundle everything together and gives you another resource to customize and to make your listing presentation stand out. So hopefully this was helpful tonight. Again, you have access to all, everything that I talked about. It's all complimentary. The only thing that would be a cost would be if you want something customized. And that's just taking my graphic designer's time to create what you need for your presentation. And she's happy to help, but you do have to go through those steps that I showed you earlier on in the call. Have a great week, you guys, and we'll talk to you next Monday.